so um, I'm super not set up. Uh, sorry about that. So yeah, so uh, so yeah, you guys get to watch me unpack my stuff. That's exciting. Um, so while I do that, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. My name's Kate Harrow. For those that don't know me, um, I am from Bullseye Turning Supply. Um, and we are based in Los Angeles, California. Um, we, I've been turning for several years now and Bullseye has existed officially um, for about a year. About a year officially. We, I, I had been making blanks for a long time um, and then we officially like had a name about a year ago. Um, and we've kind of, uh, gathered a reputation around the quote-unquote kitless kit. So if you guys have seen these, that's what I'm going to do a demonstration on today. Um, it's a closed-end pen, pen kit that's designed to be closed-end. So you can do, um, you can turn a junior or any other, not any other pen kit, but many pen kits are able to be turned as a closed-end kit, um, but these are specifically designed to be closed-end. There is no hardware involved on the finials of the kit. Um, what you get in the kit is a, oh, oh, oh my. Oh my goodness. Um, sorry, I got distracted. Um, where was I? Yeah, the directional we tried yesterday, and so we'll actually lose light on her if we turn the ones on and see the screen better. Sorry. I'll, I'll do my best to show and tell what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, so what you get in these kits is the, um, the section hardware. This is the fountain pen version. It also comes as a rollerball option. Um, so you get the section hardware, this piece that actually inserts inside the blank of the pen, um, and then you get a cap insert. Uh, and so this piece glues inside your cap, this piece glues inside the body, and then the two connect. So there is no piece on the opposite end of the cap or the opposite end of the body. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like when we're done. Um, I think that that is all of my stuff. So let's get this set up. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to drill these out. Um, hopefully, there we go. Um, it's pretty simple, but you basically just wanna make sure they don't drill all the way through your blank. Um, because then you'll end up with a hole in the end of your pen and that's no fun. Um, so I have a set of blanks here prepped for this. And, boy, it's like, where's my thing? Um, forgive me, this is only my second time doing this live. I also have a YouTube video that's much more polished, but here you get to ask me questions and see me flounder live on stage, so. Um, it's a little more fun. Um, but yeah, so I apologize for not being super awesome on stage, as you may have heard. I am a theater person at heart, but I was always behind the scenes building scenery and doing the lights. So clearly being in front of people and talking is not my forte. Um, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna get set up with your blanks. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to figure out what you guys can see and what you can't see, okay. So, so basically what I do when I'm starting out with these is I start with the actual kit and I'll take my converter and I'll, if I'm doing a fountain pen or if I'm doing, you know, a rollerball, take the ink and I'll actually take this and find the thing. This is actually set up for the other kit, which is shorter, um, as you can see. So that's gonna be set up like that. Um, and so what I'll do is I'll take my drill bits and figure out which ones go to which. But I'll actually mark out my drill bits with a Sharpie. And so what I do, is for example, 
you know, this is your largest drill bit. And so I'll actually take it and mark out that step. If you can see. No. Where's my thing? Okay. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's a little hard to show on the camera. Um, oh, there we go. Um, but I actually mark out the steps on the Sharpie. In the instructions for these, the actual dimensions are listed if that's your preference, but I find it so much easier to just lay this out on the table with your bits and, and mark them with a Sharpie. That way you don't have to um, come back every time and try to figure it out over and over again. It's so, um, so, so much easier to just do it with a Sharpie. Um, so, go. So we have our, I have these marked, I have this one marked. This one is the same for both, so I actually have two Sharpie marks. One's labeled Artemis and one's labeled Apollo. Um, the difference between the Artemis and the Apollo is just that one's larger than the other. I get that question a lot. Um, the Artemis is the, is the big sister to the Apollo. Um, the Apollo is, um, has a smaller nib and, uh, the Artemis is more of the size of a junior, where the Apollo is a little bit smaller. I'm just making sure I'm drilling the right one for the right thing. Okay, cool. All right, sweet. I swear that after this drilling part, this gets a lot more interesting. And I'm only gonna drill the body of this because I trust that you guys know how to drill. So basically you're gonna drill in steps. The first step is the quarter inch drill bit, um, which is basically just to accommodate this little, this little nubbin on the end. Um, but I'm not gonna bother with that for this particular thing because I know I'm running late on time because we started late. So I'm just gonna start with the 5 16ths and I'm gonna do that later at home. So we're gonna do the 5 16ths and then we're going to do the, um, I believe it's the 23, 30 seconds, if I'm right. Is, I can't remember off the top of my head. Or 15, 15, 30 seconds? Something like that. Okay, let's go. I tighten this down. Also, if anybody has any questions at any point, you know, just just shoot a hand in the air and I'll I'll try my best. Yeah. Yes. So it doesn't have to be like wood Yeah, I, I do wood ones as well, and I'm actually the one I'm gonna turn for you is wood, it's stabilized mango. Um, if you're going to do one out of wood, I do recommend it being it be stabilized. Um, and I also recommend, um, the kit list guys will tell you to sleeve it um, and use a piece of resin or something to create a sleeve on the inside of it um, so that you know the ink doesn't get in the wood or anything. Um, I don't find that fully necessary. Um, for these, I prefer to just, um, take some thin CA glue and kind of flood the inside of it to create a barrier. Um, you're basically sealing the inside of the wood. You saw nothing. Um, you're basically sealing the inside of the wood so that it um, can't soak up any moisture from the ink. Um, that's what I've found works pretty well. But I would say use your best judgment. Oh, I was like, what's going on? My lathe at home has a much longer travel on the quill. <laughs> Sorry. There we go. 
Also, I just want to give a little shout out to Drop Anchor Creations. I don't think either of them are in here, but um, at the Mid-Atlantic Gathering, I didn't have a toothbrush to brush away my shavings, and Ed ran back and grabbed me a ribbon wrangler from their table, so shout out to them because I brought it this time. Um, that was like, he totally saved the day. That was really awesome. It's not what you know, too, you know. Got the in the motel room. I know, right? <laughs> I was like on stage, the thing was covered in ribbons, I was covered in ribbons, and I was like, man, I should have brought a toothbrush. And Ed ran back and was like, I got you. It's like, ah, oh, yeah. Sweet. I am doing the right one, right? Yeah. Okay, so now we're just widening this hole just to our line, and that's to accept that, that fatter part of the sleeve. An awful noise. I'm so sorry. It's always so weird doing this with like a lathe that you've never worked with. I don't know if any of you have ever done demos. I know a few people have in here. It's always so weird <laughs> working with a lathe that you've never used before. It's like so uh, unfamiliar. Okay, so um, where's my thing? Plus the anxiety of having to do all this in front of you and not screw up. God. So now we have our hole, and I didn't drill through the back and I didn't screw up. Okay. So that basically, and of course I lost where I put my dang hardware. Um, excuse the fact that I totally drilled this for an Artemis and I have an Apollo with me. So it's gonna fit totally super loose and not at all, but. But this is the idea, basically, is that it fits in there like that. Kazunte. Um, and so that'll fit the Artemis. And of course, I have an Apollo because my Artemis is glued into my blank already. Sorry. Um, so now, we take our stuff off. The cap is you know, second verse, same as the first kind of deal. Um, so now we're gonna use a collet chuck. If you don't already have a collet chuck, I know certain people in the room use a Jacob's chuck in the headstock. Not gonna name any names. Don't particularly recommend doing that, but you can. Um, you're gonna use a 3 8 collet in here. Do, oh, there we go. Sorry, this is a little hard to... Um, get used to. Um, you use a three eighths collet in the head suck, in the, in the collet, I mean. Um, and if I can find what I did with my mandrels. And we sell these mandrels that are specifically made for um, the kits. But you can also make your own mandrels at home. Um, I know a lot of people have been doing that. But um, these are machined from stainless steel and they're nice and accurate. So uh, you actually just slide that into the threads. Hold on, let me, there we go. Thread that in. Do, 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 do. Put that guy in there, like so. No, so, there we go and tighten that up. And we're gonna take that out, deal with that later. Ta-da. Okay, on your, on your body end, do you um, true the end up at all before doing the hardware in? I do. Yeah, so, and that's, that's actually a great question slash point. Um, 
Sometimes I get a little lazy and I just cut my blanks on the chop saw so that they're already kind of trued up. Um, but all it really takes is once you uh, once you drill your holes, just take a piece of sandpaper and like just sand the end so that so that it's true, and then your hardware will fit flush. Just check your hardware. You have a gap, sand it a little more. Then you're good. Um, as long as you can't see that little gap in there, then you're fine. Um, the one thing I will say as well is that um, a couple of folks have told me that they use the ultra sheer trimmer from Woodpeckers, that like crazy carbide trimmer that's super expensive. I don't have one of those, but you can put that in your tail stock and trim it up that way. And that's also like a good way to get it like nice and square, um, but I'm not that fancy, so I don't do it that way. Um, but apparently that's a really nice way of doing it too. So if you have one of those, then good for you. Yeah. Now, how do you do that? Do you? You have a. They make jigs for the. Uh, for uh, the, uh, for the punches. Sure, but you don't have a hole all the way through your blank. No, you don't need. You just need uh, just just to. Uh, X is a guy. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Oh, there you go. There's another way. Yeah, there's always more than one way to skin a cat. Just kind of whatever works for you, you know. So, this is all nice and tight. This is threaded on here. And now we're going to bring our tail stock up and tighten that bad boy up there. And this is like such a tiny little baby tool rest. Okay. Cool. So. In my last demo, I did an alumilite blank and everybody kind of got on me about it already being round and I kept asking how, the, how you take the corners off. And I was like, I turn them off. A lot of people were saying, you know, that they sand them off or they cut them off. So I was like, okay, well this time I'll do wood. So. Um, I have this set to 2800 RPM, in case anybody's curious. I turn fast. Um, if I was home, I would have it cranked all the way up. Um, but, you know. Tighten this up a little more. This blank's hard as a rock. <laughs> it's stabilized curly mango. So I maybe should have considered what I was doing when I chose my blank. <laughs>
Has anybody seen my YouTube video of me doing this? Where I break it? If I do that again, you have every right to make fun of me. But at least this isn't burl this time. Like that one was an Amboynia burl that definitely had a fracture. Definitely wasn't entirely my fault. Round. So one of the things I want to point out too is that these mandrels, oh of course you can't see it on camera. So these mandrels uh, have this kind of little built-in bushing and that's sort of the size that you want to turn it to. Um, of course if you're doing something special, you know, special design or whatever, ignore that. But um, generally speaking if you're just doing a, a straight up um, pen, uh, then that's kind of the size that you're shooting for. Um, if you go to the bushing on both of them, they'll meet up nice and flush. There's one thing I'm confident in. I did a really good job stabilizing this thing. It's really hard. <laughs> it's looking nice though. I really like mango. Mango is probably one of my favorites, like mango and koa. I'm just talking now because you guys are really quiet. It's like super awkward, so. Huh? Mango and koa. Yeah, I like the curly tropical woods. Kind of a sucker for them.
What was that a question? When you're doing um, the hardware again, do you, do you turn one and then glue the other one later, like for grain alignment? I, um, I glue the body in first, and then I, what I, what I should do is glue the body in first, and then turn just the edge of it where the hardware is, and then glue in the cap. And the reason I say that is because the first couple of times I did these, um, when I flushed them up, I didn't flush them up real good because I don't have that fancy tool. Um, and I, uh, and then because of that, I had too much of a gap in between, and my hardware would show. And that's easy enough to fix. You know, you can put a little a little accent band on the cap, no big deal. Um, but what I started doing after that was turning just the body enough so that it would seat into the cap a little bit better, so I would get a more flush glue up. Um, so that I can uh, make sure that the, the cap insert is seated all the way, basically. Because um, that's, that's honestly the biggest thing that people do with these, is they don't insert the cap, um, the little black threaded insert for the cap, far enough into the cap blank, and then the, uh, the little edge of the hardware shows on the body blank. That's probably the number one thing I see um, as far as like quote unquote mistakes. So it's the idea Yeah, I mean, if, if you don't want to for like aesthetics, then sure, that's fine. But like the intent is to do that, yeah. So that's probably the, the number one thing I see. Um, but yeah, I've, I've basically like just gotten to a point where now I, I the, if you start with a really fat blank, you have a bigger chance of having that, that unseen gap when you glue up. Um, and so I just started making my blanks smaller um, because there's no, like look at how chunky this blank is. I, I don't need all that. Like that's just a lot of stuff to turn away, especially in front of you guys. Like I should have I should have trimmed that, look at all that. You know, like that's unnecessary. You know, so. somewhere to go, um, which actually this, you know, I probably shouldn't say this, but um, I actually messed up gluing the cap of this one, so I'm going to have to do some doctoring when I get home, um, because the air didn't have anywhere to go, and it actually um, kind of made the insert on this cap like a little wonky, so I'm going to have to kind of fix it when I get home. And that was just me kind of being impatient and trying to prep it for the show, you know, and not taking my time and actually doing it correctly. Um, and just trying to like get it glued so I could get on the plane and get out of here, you know, like instead of doing it the right way. The fast way is never the right way. It's, you know. And I, I don't know your name, but you look like my brother and it's freaking me out. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I keep looking at you, so I'm, I'm sorry, but like you kind of look like my brother. It's really weird. I should look at it at this point. 
Mm, it's kind of chunky, but we're getting there. Do you want me to take a cap and see if I go to the workshop and back to and save you a little time? That would be so wonderful, Greg. Why are you so cool? Because I'm a good guy. Is there a collet chuck, though? Oh, do you mean like with a bandsaw? Yeah. Yeah, oh, you're so great. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know how I'm doing on time because like everything started late, so I have no sense of where we're at. I don't even know when I started. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we're, we're doing it live. <laughs> Making it up as we go along. So. Because part of me is like, I could show you how to part this off now, but part of me is like, eh, it's still a little chunky. Like, do I have time? <laughs> okay. The other thing, I hate that noise, but because it's so hollow on the inside, it's gonna like resonate like that. Especially when it's wood. And especially when you only brought two tools with you because you flew in. So at this point, because you still have your tailstock engaged, this is a good time to do a little sanding here. I'm not gonna sand because like, obviously I wanna move forward with the demo, but um, at this point is when I would do a lot of the sanding on the body of the pen um, before doing the part off on the end. Um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and part it so that you guys can see. I also would normally use a parting tool, but again, I only brought a couple things with me. So I'm gonna attempt to do it with a square cutter. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> it's fine. We're gonna be fine. It's only really big. Don't worry about it. shaping on the end, making it up as I go along. A lot of people kind of have their signature shapes on the end of these. You are... It didn't take a lot, but I got enough. You are a gentleman and a scholar, Greg. Thank you. Um... There's a lot of opportunities for creativity with like, um, with your shapes on the ends of these. Um, I'm not gonna get too funky, uh, mostly because I'm exhausted. <laughs> but hey, you know what? That's not too bad for having the wrong tool. So basically I get it close and then I very gently remove the rest.
trying to continue my shape. There we go. Cool. And then you take a little bit of your sandpaper and you just kind of make it not look like crap. I mean, right? Yeah, you know, I'm honest. I ain't gonna sugarcoat it. Look at that. That looks lovely. Come on, there we go. Yeah, you guys can't really see that. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, it's a little, I guess it is a little hard to see because of the lighting, but yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess I'll do the cap. I mean, do I have time? I mean, you guys want me to? Whatever. You guys want to pass this around? Please ignore the fact that the body's super rough. Obviously, I didn't sand it. Um, I'm gonna do it unless you tell me not to. I think you have half an hour. Oh my god. <laughs> what? You started at 9, right? Did I? No, I didn't. That was being started. The opening stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So we're like one hour behind schedule. The Smith Boys runs all the time. If we're being consistent. <laughs> <laughs> that means you have until 10 15 and it's 9 48. You're good. So good. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. 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 Unless we're trying to go, I would go until Jess throws you out. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, cool, because I don't have an Artemis on my table for display, so I'll just finish the dang thing. So, can these kits are available? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you, uh, if you go find Michael Harden, who's not hard to find because he's loud and he's tall, I'm across from him. <laughs> Would you guys think less of me if I told you this is the first Artemis I've turned? Because it is. I've turned a ton of the Apollos. It's the same thing, it's just smaller. Um, but we only got the Artemis in June, and I've been so dang busy uh, that I actually haven't turned one yet, so this is my first one. But it's the same exact process, so... I'm excited. I like it. It's it's a little bigger, but it's. Do you see a glue or do you? I use epoxy. Yeah. Yeah. I I'll do like I'll do a CA glue finish on this probably, um, or craft coat depending on how I'm feeling. I mean it's it's really nice, so I might not want to put a big hard finish on it. Maybe I'll go a little softer with the craft coat, but um, but yeah, I don't I don't ever use CA to put parts in um, tubes tubes or or these hardware pieces. Um, I like having more working time than that. How am I doing on time? We're just talking about that. I mean, if you if you need me to bail on this, I I can. I think we've gotten the gist down, but I'm on the cap. Okay. to sharpen my round tool before I came here. Jason, he probably has some, he probably brought some of his T-Shadow 
bits with him. Yeah, and like last, like for the Mid Atlantic, I like brought my sharpening cards and my tool, and I didn't use them. So then this time I didn't pack them, and then of course I'm like, ah, of course my stuff stall. Dang it. But it's fine. My squ my square is pretty sharp. Well, it was when I started. <laughs> but it's okay. We're getting there. At least I'm not turning hemp wood, you know. Yeah. Like at least <laughs> at least it's just this. I'm supposed to be doing a, um, can you hear me like while I'm turning? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool, sweet. Um, so they want, they, the, uh, the hemp wood people, they want me to, they want me to start turning hemp wood at demos, like at, at events. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, thank you. The, the thing with the turning hemp wood live is like, like you think, you think this is nerve wracking? Hemp would not in front of people is nerve wracking. <laughs> like that stuff is like, you know, I've turned dozens of them and I'm still like, okay, yeah, like this is, this is an event. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah, even stabilized. Like, and now I gotta, now you want, you want me to do it live? <laughs> okay. Huh? Did you ever turn the decoder world stuff? No, no. That sounds awful. Oh. God, this, the end of this. Oh, my tailstock's not even like doing its thing. That's why. I was like, why is this screaming? Can I check with Jason? We are going to just push everything an hour, even lunch. So you've got until 10 15. All right, cool. Twenty minutes. Um, I feel like I feel like this is I feel I feel so awkward about this. Do you guys want to like pass out some magnets? I got so many magnets in this thing, and they're like sticking all my tools. <laughs> it's like I don't know why we packed them that way. Oh, hey, that's better. When your tail stock's engaged, it works a lot better, guys. <laughs> Just, just a heads up, you know, pro tip. Oh, look at that. Oh my gosh. out on the vendor floor and made sure my parents are doing all right? <laughs> it was like my, so my sister was with us in, uh, in Virginia at Mid-Atlantic and, uh, and when I went to do the, the demo, as soon as I walked away, I heard her go, everything's a dollar. <laughs> I was like, great. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> we should take a 23 me test, man. You you seriously look like you look like my family. It's weird. Where are you from? Virginia. Huh, weird. I don't have any family in Virginia. <laughs>
would have to like do something to your end finial to make it postable. Like you would have to kind of taper the end. Um, I, I would just say be careful uh, if you want to make it postable, just because the threads are plastic, right? So you, if you jam this on to the end of your thing, you could damage the threads, right? Right. Right. Okay. So I have seen people make a few and call them postable. Um, I wouldn't, but that's just me. I also don't like postable pens, so I haven't really tried. But um, but I don't. I also don't see why you couldn't thread the end. Like if you're doing like an alumilite one, I don't see why you couldn't thread the end with the same threads and and make it postable. The only problem is that they, these are single threaded. They're, I'm working on trying to get them triple threaded. Um, it's just my manufacturer is doesn't understand why I want that because he's not as in tune with what the people want. Um, so he's like, why? I'm like because because what you're doing is silly. So please please change it. But yeah, like, I, th I think you could definitely like thread the end and make it postable. Well, he's not triple threading them, and I want him to. And the reason why he doesn't is because he wants your business. When he asks you why you should do that, it's because you want this money dying waiting in front of your face. Yeah, yeah, because I'll take my business elsewhere. Precisely. Right, yeah. It's the golden rule. to flush on this. Oh, thank you so much. favorite parts about this kit is that if you turn it too fat and then a week later you go, nah, I don't really like it anymore, you throw it back on the lathe. It's not like other kits where you have to press stuff together and disassemble it. Literally just put it back on the mandrel, put it back on the lathe, refinish and polish it. You're done. Um, I've done that multiple times where I, I didn't like the shape of it, I turned it too chubby, I, you know. I looked at it a week later and went, mm, no, I'm not feeling it. And uh, yeah, all right, here we go again for this. <laughs>
on parting with a square tool? <laughs> Am I not doing that now? <laughs> but you're not explaining it. Well, you, you see, what you do is you don't, first you start by not packing your parting tool. <laughs> Let's see. After that, it becomes natural. And then you pack a room full of people <laughs> and get yourself real nervous. <laughs> And you definitely want your square tool to be sharp if you're doing this, by the way. Or whatever you're using, but especially if you're using the wrong thing. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for that. <laughs> I am doing comedy later, so. <laughs> It's just because I don't have that engaged, so I don't want it to, you know, I'm parting with the wrong thing, so I'm, I'm giving it a little extra, a little extra love, you know. I don't want it to, and especially after, after breaking it in my YouTube video, I, I try to, uh, oh yeah, uh, I went to part off the end and it was a piece of burl and it snapped in half. And then I glued it back together, and then I did it again off camera. And then I glued it together again, and then I got it. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that one was fun. <laughs> we weren't naming any names about who was, uh, who was using the Jacobs Chuck. the only one by the way I've gotten so many emails it's like can you use a Jacob's check and then like three hours later you can but it's not great <laughs> yes yeah, see that's why because I don't want to do that a nice little like flat part here and then it comes up so it's like it's perfect it's like it's it's made for that it's like a little shelf to put my stuff and then I just lean <laughs> lean on it you can't do that with all of them the, the uh, comic tunes their plastic cover right I mean literally half an inch or less under that plastic cover is the uh, it's the encoder, the two things. Oh, no way. And it's plastic. So, yeah, the first time I did that, it broke most of the teeth off of that thing. Oh, shoot. Back to Nova. Really? Three magnets, guys? Come on. <laughs> There's not three more people that want magnets. There's plenty more at my table, too. You get one with every purchase. And if you purchase from the online store, you also get Jolly Ranchers. I know. I know. Enough stuff from enough people, you can do Halloween. Oh, seriously. <laughs> I mean, between MMs and Smarties, Smarties and, and. I don't get any of them, but bags. between my dad and my fiance, they take all the candies. <laughs> That looks about done. Ooh, that's a pretty piece. 
I like it. No, you're a pretty piece. <gasps> Shucks. <laughs> Thanks, y'all.